Today it's it's about using ORIN. I'm, I'm, this video is assuming that you already know what ORIN is and uh, probably you have your robot set up and now now you're going on your application phase, right? Where you want to start uh, creating a simple program and talking to the RC8 controller. I'm going to be uh, doing it in C Sharp. So if, you, if you're looking for ORIN in C++ or BB.NET, uh, it might not be the specific language, but uh, a lot of the basics are still there, so you can use this as reference. And that is one of the nice things about ORIN. It's, it's supposed to be uh, more or less the same parameters and language across the board. Okay, so we're going to start. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to open a Visual Studio. And I'm going to start a project from scratch, right? So I'm going to show you everything that you have to do to set up and do your project. So we're going to click New Project right here. And then um, for Visual C Sharp, there's going to be a form application here. Um, I'm going to call my Orin app, right? Um, I click OK. So by now you should have Orin 2 installed on your system. If you haven't, then probably is a good time to pause this video and go and install uh, your Orin 2. So I have this uh, original project that I'm just going to copy everything. Right? I'm going to paste it right there. So it's going to be the same thing. We're going to do just the same thing, but it's going to be from scratch, right? So you, you guys are going to get to see everything that is going on. So, um, all right, so first thing we want to do is let's look at the code here. So we go here, look at the code. So this is what we start with, right? Okay, so let's add our reference uh, by click, right clicking here, then selecting add and reference. And we're going to go to the extensions part on the left side, and then Make sure you check on the CIO RCW uh, framework because this is what our ORIN2 uh, engine uses. Okay, so then we click OK, and now we can add our ORIN2 uh, library, right? Our reference. So then, when we start working or uh, initializing all those uh, ORIN variables. Uh, the when we compile it will know where to go right so it will it will not error out so then what I want to do on my starting here I just want to play some global variables right and I'm gonna have uh, three global variables one is gonna be my my CAO engine then the other one is gonna be my RCA a controller reference for my RC8 and then I'm going to use a, a reference for it, one of the variables right and in this case because of the example that we're going to use is this example it connects to the robot right and then I have the option to read a the variable uh, S10 or I can write to the variable S10 right I mean it could be any variable but I'm just using this uh, for the example, uh, and S10 is one of the string global variables inside the RC8, right? So this is a good test to know that everything is working on your uh, setup. Okay, so going back here, I mean, maybe I want to add something like disable some of the buttons, right? So I I don't click read or write before connecting to the robot, right? Uh, this way, I avoid causing any errors, and, and I don't want to have to do a lot of error handling in this example. All right, so I'll disable all the buttons except for um, except for the for the connect button, right? Because I I want to have the connect button enabled, and now I initialize the Orin engine. Or an engine equals to new CO engine object, right? So now let's add some actions to our button connect. So 
what are we going to do when we connect here? So when we connect, uh, I want to connect to my RC8 uh, controller, right? So the RC8, the RC8 controller, right, is going to, this is going to store the reference to that um, object, right, in the engine. It's going to be ORIN engine workspaces item your add control item zero dot add controller and now the first uh, parameter for the add controller function is I I gotta give it a controller name if I leave it blank uh, the engine will give it a, a a name automatically a unique name um, or I can decide what name to give it, right? I could say like RC8 or robot, uh, controller one. Uh, the only issue is that if I have a, a fixed name and let's say um, I want to run this twice, if that name is already inside the engine and it was not uh, cleared out, then I run into the issue of uh, getting uh, rejected by the by the by the Orin engine, right, to allow me to create a new controller object with the same uh, name. So I always leave it blank. So now I have to name the provider. As you may know, uh, Orin is not exclusive to the RC8 or the RC7, right? Uh, mo different devices uh, can use Orin, right? So we have to name which of those providers or drivers am I going to is my controller going to be using, right? So my controller is going to be using the RC8 uh, provider, right? So then then the next parameter, I have to tell it, where is this uh, provider at? Is it at my computer or is it on, on a server, right? So right now, because I'm using the Orient engine on my laptop, then then I just specify that it's in this, uh, in this system. And the, la the last thing is, I have to give it the address of the RC8 controller. So a controller that I have has the default address, right? So so this will connect to the to the robot. If you want a more robust solution, then you might need to add error handling, right? What if it faults out? What if it returns an error? What if it's not successful? Uh, but right now, I'm assuming that it's going to work out, right? I'm going to try to play the best scenario, but of course, don't use this as your final uh, as your final version, right? Uh, try to try to uh, make uh, avoid as many errors as possible. So then, because I'm going to assume that I'm after after I go through this line, right? After I go through the add controller, now I'm going to have a controller reference. So now I want the reference for my S10 variable. So RC8 variable um, eight variable okay there you go rc8 variable so here for to add the controller i use um, an attribute from the orient engine right so now because i'm using the the variable from the controller i have to use the controller attribute controller add variable right so i add the variable and i reference to the actual global variable in the controller so the global variable is s10 right if, so after i do this right now i have a pointer of wherever i'm using the variable s10 uh, object it's going to be referencing the the string variable number 10 from the rc8 controller okay so then maybe after doing this i will enable the read and write buttons right so button read dot enable equals to true right button right uh, right enable equals to true and then probably it will be a good idea to so that I avoid uh, once you click connect probably I just disable this right again what if uh, what if you fail to connect right um, you probably wanna uh, sorry it should be false you probably wanna 
enable it again, right? Otherwise, if you fail to connect and you disable the button, then how are you going to click the connect button again? But uh, ideal scenario, right? I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about error handling. So then the option for reading the S10 value. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to store the value of of S10 into into this label, right? So it's going to I'm going to store the value of S10 into this label when I click the the button read variable. So what I'm going to do is uh, label variable content that text, right? That's the attribute for whatever text is showing up. It's going to be equal to RC8 uh, variable S10 dot value, right? So it's going to return the value of uh, the S10 uh, global variable in the controller. And then I just want to convert this to string just to have it in the correct format. Okay. The next thing is writing. Okay. So for when I click the right um, button, I want to see, uh, I want to write to the controller variable, right? Before we're reading, we're just, uh, whatever value the controller S10 uh, variable has, just pass it over and post it on my form. But now when I click the right variable, I want to see, uh, I want to overwrite the current uh, S10 value on the controller, right? So how can I do this? I'll write the S RC8 variable S10 dot value, right? So that's what I'm going to write to. Um, it's going to be equal to the label variable content dot, te dot uh, text plus one. I'm trying to think of this. So let's try to do that. And then the last thing is close. Uh, not only turn down the connection, but I also want to make sure that I'm clearing the references on my engine. Right. So the way to do this, the simple way to do this, of course, is uh, I don't know if you remember how we initialize everything. So first we call the engine, then we call the controller, and then we call the variable. So what we need to do when we're uh, destroying all of our objects, we're clearing our object references is we have to go backwards, right? So first the variables, then the controller, and then the engine. So so we go RC8 dot, oh, sorry, RC8 controller dot variables dot clear. So this uh, will clear all of the local. And then, then I just uh, RC8. S10 equals null, right? Just destroy that uh, object. Oh, wait. It's not. It's capital. Variable. Yeah. And then my controller. The workspaces. Dot item. Zero. Dot uh, index. Okay. So I'm clearing now the controller objects. Equals null. And now the Orin engine. I think this video is, is getting getting too long for the usual videos that we put on this channel. But I think it's important to, to know this. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's try to just start it. What? Look at that. So it runs, no errors, wow. So the next thing we gotta do now that it works, right? So we gotta make sure uh, we can test it on the controller, right? So so I'm gonna pause this video for a minute while I 
uh, actually have a controller here so I'm gonna uh, turn it on and uh, I'm gonna test uh, test the communication okay all right okay so I got the controller to connect so you should be able to see right now what the status of S10 is so S10 is no right now so let's try out to run our program so you can see here we got our program here so click connect so we got this to enable so this tells me that right now this is working right so if I read the variable value from S10 is nothing right but what if I try to edit this value here um, Alright, so I oh sorry. I did it for S S zero. Um S ten. Okay, so there there is a value for S ten, so I'm gonna read it now. Let me read the value. So there it is. Hello, right? Uh so if I write the variable so now it's hello one. So I read it, hello one. If I write again, if I read, write, read, write. So I keep adding once, right? It's appending. And it's not adding because it's it's text, right? Um so it's fine. So it's working now. So there you go. This is how you will do it. If you want to close your reference. So now if I click the read variable, nothing's gonna happen and it probably error errors out, right? So that is all going to be part of your error handling, right? Probably disable those buttons after I close or I don't know. So this is a very, very quick way to uh, just do a simple ORM program, how to get started. Probably the most important thing uh, that you're going to need to know is how to add the controller, right? What are the parameters? And of course, uh, your ORM2 reference. Uh, I hope you enjoy this and if you have any questions, uh, please contact us uh, at uh, dancerobotics.com. All right. Well, thanks.